Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and I've been back into the Lions franchise here on the channel. In the last episode, we did split with two of the top teams in our division, and well, everybody's good in our division, the Vikings and the Packers. We beat the Packers at Lambeau and then lost at home to the Vikings, but we do have a couple of player upgrades coming off of those games. TJ Hawkinson, well, he's been a monster so far, and no surprise, He's already got an up, upgrade, and he goes up plus three catching traffic and pass blocking. Pretty good. We do need to play 500 downs to unlock his dev trait, and it looks like we're about a fifth of the way there. I don't even know how that's possible when I'm playing the full games, but I guess that's a lot of downs we had to play just to unlock the dev trait, but we're getting there. Danny Amendola has an upgrade. He's kind of older on a one-year contract as well, so I don't really care too much about him. But we're looking at receiver, and I do care about the position as a whole because, you know, going into next season, we don't really know who our slot's going to be. So we kind of want to develop a guy. I'm looking at Richard Weiss. He's a pretty good prospect there, projected to go in the third round, but first round talent, that's actually really, really good. He's a number 11 rated wide receiver, so I definitely added him to our board. Looking at some other guys, Eduardo Salas is a deep route runner. He's only six foot, so right now I'm looking for a guy that is different I don't know what he's gonna be good at but I want a guy that's gonna be different either a guy that's a game changer at going up and getting it or just a great route runner or a catch in traffic or a guy over the middle I don't really know what I'm looking for I'm just looking for more of just a developmental receiver who's who can provide some much needed depth at receiver because you know Jermaine curse I hope he recovers well in real life he did break his leg but in ours he's not very very good he has made a impact so far but we'll have to see you know i have kind of lined him up in the slot more than often and danny amendola is pretty slow so i'm looking at other guys here in the first round nick knight is one of them a minus back tack uh b plus catching traffic he's pretty good um but we'll see so we are going up against the giants here in this video and also the raiders so two teams we don't really play too much but we do actually uh, go up against another NFC team here and look at Eli Manning starting out the year 14 and 4 and Got the Giants to a winning record atop of the NFC East Sterling Shepard is their leading receiver with four touchdowns Golden Tate has three the former Lion and they're looking pretty good Especially on the offensive side of the ball. I mean they have a ton of playmakers Just looking at our leaders here. Damon Harrison is actually leading our team in sacks with five and I believe that's actually his career high in sacks. If you think about it, let's just look at his stats here and just looking at everything. Yeah, I mean, that's his career high already in sacks and we're about halfway done with the season, not even. And he's already got his career high there. Looking at receivers, Marvin Jones is our best. Uh, I guess he's leading our team in yards, but you know, I like the kind of the balance that we're uh, distributing here. I mean, TJ Hawkinson in two games, already 20 receptions and over 200 yards. I mean, he's beasting, but I like the distribution, especially even running the ball. CJ Anderson's getting a pretty good dose of carries. Kerryon Johnson, I would expect him to be kind of the workhorse, but you know, I kind of like what I'm seeing. Matt Stafford does need to improve, but that improves with getting better at the game as well. So bear with me sometimes when I throw some stupid passes or you know, make stupid mistakes. I'm still getting better at the game as well. And I'm also transitioning in between NCAA and Madden. It's definitely a difficult thing if you guys have ever done it. I mean, just it, the gameplay is just so much different. So we are hopping into this game and we are at home as we take on the New York Giants. So let's start this one out on the goal line. Here's a handoff up the middle. This time, Carryon Johnson takes a big hit. And he can't get into the end zone. But t coming off of a big game, 83 yards off of 19 carries, that's pretty good for the second-year pro out of Auburn. But now a third and goal. Here's a throw out of the back of the end zone. That time was intended for Marvin Jones, and we do settle for three. So here are the Giants out on the first drive of their uh, of this game for them. Here is Saquon Barkley with the handoff up the middle. He's got about a gain of four on that one bringing it to a third and five at the five yard line. Here is Eli dropping back, throwing to the right side and that's almost picked off by Jared Davis. And they are gonna have to settle for three as they line up for the field goal here. But no, it's a fake. They're gonna try to fake this and they can't get rid of the pass. 
What are they thinking on that one? That was just stupid. They're in field goal range. Just tie the game up. So now here we come back out on the next drive. Here's a throw across the middle. This time we got our tight end. That Actually, that's Jermaine Curse, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's Curse for a big 20-yard gain. So now a third and 15 at the 35-yard line. Here's a throw to the right side. This time T.J. Hawkinson gets the first down but gets hit hard, and he coughs this one up. And that is going to be a turnover, a fumble recovery by Alec Ogletree, his first year with the Giants. And that's an, actually a nice route. He gets open, gets to the first down marker, but then coughs it up. And that's a turnover. So the Giants do uh, actually get on the board on that following drive. But here we are, back on offense, putting together a two-minute drive. Here's a throw out to the right side. That time it's Jermaine Curse. He's got a catch and run and a nice gain of about 20 yards. So now on a second and nine, this time Stafford throws on the run. He dump, dumps it to the right side. This time Marvin Jones is sitting there waiting for it. He's got about a gain of 14 and a first down. So now this first quarter does, first half does wind down. Here's a dump off pass. This time on Johnson puts the ball on the turf and they pick it up. And look at them, they're off to the races. Matt Stafford cannot catch him and he's gonna score on that one. The Giants already forced two turnovers here in the first half and that one goes for a touchdown carry on johnson trying to put on a juke move and he ends up coughing it up so now on to the second half here is a throw across the middle here is tj hawkinson now we're down by eight as he gets another catch across the middle for a first down so now at about the 11 yard line here's a throw to the end zone this time hawkinson holds on to it but he's in the end zone four the touchdown and Hawkinson has got off to a really fast start for the Lions and he gets six on the board. So we do go for two points here. On a 14 to 12 game, we throw to the end zone off of our back foot. Stafford can't make the throw and now it's still a two point game. So here are the Giants later in the third quarter. Dump off pass, this time Saquon Barkley is across the middle and he's picking up about a gain of seven on that one for a first down. So now a second and goal carry, this time up the middle. Saquon fights forward for the touchdown. And now the Giants extend this lead 21 to 12. So now as this third quarter does wind down, here is Stafford, throw across the middle. He's got his man Marvin Jones across the middle of the field. And that is a first down. So now past the 50 yard line at about the 33. Here is Stafford from the shotgun, this time dumping it off to carry on Johnson. Hold on to the ball this time. He gets tackled for about a gain of five. So now a second and five from the shotgun. Trips to the left. Stafford has all day to throw. He's going to dump it off across the middle. There's Marvin Jones getting open again for a nice catch and run. That's enough for a first down. So now a third and three. Here's a throw across the middle. This time Amendola takes a big hit, but he holds on to it inside the five. And now we're in business as we move on to the fourth quarter. Inside the five, Stafford facing a blitz. Right across the middle, wide open is Jesse James for the touchdown. And now we get it back to within one score here as we might actually be in jeopardy of losing this one at home. So we do get the ball back here with seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. Here is on Johnson, another carry and another fumble. And his second fumble of the game, Janoris Jenkins falls on that one. And wow, on Johnson with two big fumbles in this game. Something's wrong with him. I don't know what it is, but he's just off. So here is Barkley getting the carry to the right side. Can't pick up anything. And that brings it to a third and 10. They run the draw play instead of throwing the ball there and it ends up being a loss of one yard, and they settle for the field goal. So now inside of five minutes, here's a throw to the right side. This time Danny Amendola gets free down the right sideline. He breaks a tackle, and he gets pushed out at about the 40-yard line. Nice catch and run on that one. So now a couple plays later here, third and seven. Throw out to the right side. Marvin Jones has been active in this one. He picks up the first down catch. So now at about the 14 yard line, two minutes left here in this game. Here's a throw across the middle. This time Marvin Jones fighting his way and barreling into the end zone for the touchdown. And now Detroit takes the lead here as we try to go for two here to make it a three point game. So under center this time at about the two yard line. Stafford gonna throw to the left side. This time he's getting in and that's Jesse James on the receiving end of that one as we 
extend this lead to three points. So here is Eli Manning throwing across the middle. This time he's got Evan Ingram on the next drive, and that's a big gain of about 15. So at about the 45, second and 10, throw to the left side. He's got Sterling Shepard in a lot of room. He's going to avoid a tackle that time by Melvin, and he's getting in for the touchdown. What a big gain on that one. Two plays and a touchdown, and the Giants, just like that, take the four-point lead. So now we have about a minute left here to drive down the field, and we have to get into the end zone down by four. So here is Stafford, throw out to the right side. He's got TJ Hawkinson for the first down on that one, and that is a gain of 10. Now we're at the 35. So first and 10, five wide receivers out there. Here is Jesse James again across the middle of the field, and he's getting about a gain of 14 as we try to move this ball up to the line. Two timeouts left. Here's a throw across the middle. This time we've got Jermaine Curse. He's been active in this game so far as well. He picks up about a gain of 15, and we call, call the timeout. So one timeout left. Here's a throw to the right side. TJ Hawkinson hits off his back, and he does recover, and he catches the ball. That's a funny play at about the 22-yard line. So now first and 10 at the 23. Here's a deep shot to the left side. And Mendola is overthrown. And Matt Stafford may have had it on that play. So it comes down to this. Four seconds left at the 23-yard line. Five wide out there. Here's Stafford. He's got time. He throws to the end zone. And he's got a man touchdown. Marvin Jones in the end zone. Take a look at this throw. Matt Stafford puts it where Marvin Jones can get it and the defender can't, and that is a walk-off here as we get the game-winning catch that time by Marvin Jones. What a route, and what a throw by Matt Stafford. Wow, we escaped this game with the victory at home, and we win this one 34-31 to 31 off of that great play there to end that game. And who would have thought that the Giants would be 4-2 anyway going into this game? We give them their third loss as Eli Manning must have just, I don't know, had a spark to him this season. Daniel Jones is on his heels, but he's showing that he is still a good quarterback, but it's not enough this game. TJ Hawkinson and Marvin Jones both go over 100 yards in this game. So does Sterling Shepard for the Giants, but we end up with the victory here. Trey Flowers gets two sacks. Ogletree and Golden both get one and a half sacks on us. And then Romeo Quara gets another sack added to his total on the season. So we move into the next game versus the dumpster fire that is the Oakland Raiders. I'm sorry if you're a Raiders fan, but it just does not look good. All the drama in the offseason, and it, it just it's just not good at all. I mean, I think they're just banking on waiting for the Raider or for the Vegas move. And <laughs> Can, I mean, I don't even need to go into the drama around Antonio Brown. I mean, this guy won't right now won't even play because of a helmet. I hope that's just something that he's having fun with in the media and not serious. I don't know. But we do go on to win this game versus the Raiders. Back to the action. And TJ Hawkinson, another big game. Seven receptions, 86 yards, and a touchdown. He's having himself a great start to this season. As Remember, he's only played the last four games now. And I think he's got 400 yards through four games. That's actually pretty good. And that actually might be like a record-setting pace for a rookie tight end. Who knows? But Antonio Brown is neutralized in this game as big play Slay locks him up. And he actually gets an interception on him this game. So, wow. I mean, what a victory for us as we actually go on the road and pretty much put a whooping on the Raiders. And then Damon Harrison and Mike Daniels both get half sacks. So to start out this season, we're about halfway through five and three, and we are on top of the division. And I kind of said this is how the NFC North is going to look this season. They're just going to beat up on each other, I'm pretty sure. I don't know who's going to come out on top, but my favorite is the Packers. But here in this uh, franchise, we are on top. Looking at the rest of the NFL, the Colts are undefeated. And just looking at the NFC in specific, the Saints are seven and one, no surprise there. The Rams are six and two. And everybody else is kind of in the middle of the pack. Even the Redskins are 5-3. and three. They're having a pretty good year as who knows who's going to be their quarterback this year. Probably banking on Haskins, but who knows. So we do have a couple of upgrades here. Frank Ragnow 
Uh, he's a really good a young center, number 14 in the league, but only 23 years old out of Arkansas. And I think he's going to be probably our highest paid lineman, I would say, throughout the duration of this franchise. Who knows? I don't know. It's too early to say. But this guy is incredible. He's got a lot of room to grow. I don't know if there's actually a superstar X factor on offense for offensive linemen. I'm not really sure. Uh, let me know if you guys know that. But uh, he's going to be a guy that we do want to kind of develop. Rick Wagner. We do kind of want to develop his pass blocking just because, you know, in this division, a lot of good pass rushers that are going to be getting blocked by our tackles. So we want to get that pass blocking up. He goes up plus three in pass block finesse. So that's going to do it here in this episode. Next episode, we are going up against the Chicago Bears and the Dallas Cowboys. So you don't want to miss that one. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.